Hi everyone, it's Evelyn, and in this week's video, we're going to get the sunflowers going. Well, we're going to, I'm going to be doing weekly um, um, starts of sunflowers, but this is the first one of the season, because I know from my last week's seed, last year's seed schedule, that this is the time to start my first planting of sunflowers. Last year I did an experiment and I started way too early, but I wanted to know where exactly the first succession of sunflowers did well. And this year I've backtracked by a week so that it can accommodate possibly for different uh, weather patterns from last year. And But I know not to backtrack a month's worth because I have a slightly slightly different microclimate than the rest of my area. I can't necessarily rely on what other people say because I tend to be just slightly warmer at the beginning and the end of the season. So I do my experiments to find out where I need to get things going into the garden. And my experiments last year said to start them this year. However, I am not starting them in the garden. I'm starting them in my seed room. And the reason for that is, is I have a really healthy soil situation outside, which means it's full of bugs, which means I have birds galore visiting my garden to feast on all the bugs and insects that are in the garden, which is great because they take care of a lot of the uh, pest pressure in, in my various different flower beds. But they also take care of all the weed pressure because they eat all the weed seeds. Uh, and and looking after my weeds is, is, is just a piece of cake. It's, it's effortless. However, it also means that I can't plant things directly into the garden because the birds will eat the seeds. I've tried, and you might get lucky. You might get one or two. The reason things still sell seed in the garden is because when a plant goes to seed, it's sending out hundreds upon hundreds of seeds. And if you have several plants putting out the same seeds, you're, you could be talking thousands upon thousands of seeds. And then the next year, you get a half a dozen plants growing. So that shows you how many seeds are eaten by the birds or taken out by the weather, but mostly eaten by the birds because they're, they're just feasting in my garden like you wouldn't believe, which is great. I love birds. So anyway, I will start my sunflowers in my seed room to avoid that problem. Now, before I start in the seed room, of course, I've gone to my fridge and I've gotten out my seeds and I've pulled out all the sunflowers that I'm growing. And as you know from previous videos, there's nine different ones that I'm growing. Eight of them are flat-faced, and the ninth one, which is double quick, is a, um, is a, is a full-headed sunflower. And I don't grow a lot of each one at a time. I like having a wide range of colors. And um, the reason for that is, is because I'm pairing them with other things and depending on what I'm pairing them with depends on what colors I'm going to use. Now, for instance, in this particular bouquet, you can see I've got them paired with dahlias, cosmo foliage, and sweet peas. So the combination of the sunflowers with those flowers was really determinant on what color sunflowers I used. For instance, I, I wouldn't want a white sunflower in this bouquet because it would be too much of a blast of white. Kind of like if I had a white daily in that bouquet, it would be too much of a blast of white with that as well. Unless it was a small ball dahlia, uh, like the Petra's Wedding that I grow, then that just that little sparkle of a head of white poking through the larger, more um, dominant flowers would actually be quite pretty. But let's just focus on how I get these all going before we talk about the uh, nine different varieties that I am growing. I've shown them in other videos, so if you, you can go back and watch them or you can wait till later on in the video and see which ones I'm actually growing. Also, if you wait till the end of the video, you'll see some of the uh, photographs that I took of sunflowers in the garden uh, when they were growing, um, some of my more um, artsy photographs. And I've, there's a new crocus photograph that I have in there that I didn't have last week because I hadn't taken that picture yet. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful crocus, but you have to wait till the very end of the video to see that one. Okay, so the first thing I do when I get my uh, sunflowers going is I put them in jars of water and soak them for 24 hours, thereabouts. I put them in um, in the morning one day and then I got them going in the afternoon of the following day. So you make sure that you label the jars because you don't want to mix up. I guess it doesn't really matter, but if you want to know which is which when you put them in the seed trays, 
then you want to have them all labeled. Now I do because I will be <clears throat> controlling where they go in the seed trays each one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I label the jars and uh, I put the count out the seeds and I push them off the table into each jar as I go. And then once all the jars are full of seed, of the seeds that, that, that I'm going to be starting, and in this case I'm starting nine of each one because I've allotted eight pots uh, for a sun, one sunflower each and I'm putting in a ninth seed in one pot in case there's one that doesn't germinate and then it will get transferred into the empty pot. If they all germinate, fine. Two sunflowers can grow in one of the uh, two, two and a half by two and a half by three and a half inches tall pots that I grow them in perfectly fine. Now after I've left them for the day to day and a half, you'll notice that the various different seeds turn the waters different colors, which I think is just kind of cool and pretty, but you know, irrelevant because you don't use the water for anything. And um, as I mentioned, I was going to do eight pots of seeds uh, per type. And I'm going to do it the same way I do the sweet pea method where I go black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red across two um, flats. And the first block, because black is B, which comes before red, which is R, I'll put in the sunflower that's earliest on in the alphabet, which in this case is butter chiffon. Now I have nine and this is only going to get me eight and I'd have to go into a ninth flat to do the ninth sunflower, which is fine, except I don't have the room for that because my seed room has a lot of dahlias in it, as you know, and other things that I'm growing. So I'm, even though I've got seven more shelves of grow lights this year, I'm still fighting for space. So I thought long and hard about it and I decided what to do is I still did the black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, but the bottom row would all be one. So I did solid color across the bottom. On one set of trays, it happens to be black and on one set of trays, it happens to be red, but that solid row across the bottom of the two flats will be the ninth one, which means of the other eight, there'll be two pots that have two seeds in it instead of one pot that has two seeds in it. So that was an easy way to determine which one or, or how to get all nine varieties uh, into trays that don't have an odd number like that. Now, the other thing that I did was in order to know which black was the first one for the alphabet for the other one is, is I just took a uh, an old uh, uh, flower tag, which is was actually just a piece of a yogurt container cut and labeled, but it's not labeled for what this is. But I put it in the first one. So the, the black row that has the little tag in it is the one that is the first black of the black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. So I don't have to label anything or identify anything. I can do it simply on my seed schedule. As you can see here, I've labeled them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with nine down across the bottom. And then I've got the black, red, black, red, blah, 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 with the arrows pointing downwards. And then over here on the side, I've put their names and I can write little notations if there's anything that I want to know that's different about each variety if they have a different sprouting schedule, if they one performs poorly over the other. But other than that, pretty much the, t the statistics for um, how I'm starting them, when I'm hardening them off and when I'm planting them will be the same for all nine varieties. And that'll go on the back of that piece of paper. So now that I've got the seeds soaked for a day to a day and a half, and what that does is it allows the shell to soften and in some cases, the, uh, the uh, root is already coming through just tinily, but it, it, it expedites the process of having the seed just in the soil. Hey, you don't know if it's going to germinate as well. well. Actually, you don't know if it's going to, I'm not, don't know if it's going to germinate anyway, but it does expedite it because this, the, the, the seed shell is already very much softened and split in quite a few of them. So now I have to drain the water off to get it just the seeds. And what I do is I just take another old yogurt strip uh, flower label, put it across the, the, the bottom of the uh, jar with just a little space gap going so that I can pour the water off. And then I'm just left with the jar 
with um, the seeds in it. If one falls in the water, it's easy enough to get out. Next, I place the seeds on top of each of their pots. And as you can see, I've got uh, two seeds on the top and the bottom of each row of the, of the first eight. The bottom row that goes across the bottom, there will only be one that has a double seed because there is actually eight spots of that, whereas the other ones are now down to seven. So to get nine seeds in seven, you have to double up two pots. Once the seeds are all laid into position, the next thing I have to do is bury the seeds down. And um, this, this year I just decided to try the, uh, the Sharpie method because I've seen that done by a lot of people rather than my finger because it's, my soil is so sticky. So that's what I did is I pushed the hole in with the Sharpie and then I pushed this, uh, the, uh, the uh, seed into the hole and just lightly covered it up. And you can see how sticky my soil is from this short little video clip that I'm showing you here. Now, after I've done all that, I water the pots with the, I just used the water that um, I had poured off of them and I water them all down so that the seeds are all very much soaked. Sometimes they pop up when you water it and then you just push them back down again. And after I've done a thorough watering of all the pots, I then sprinkle vermiculite across um, to stop any algae growth and to keep the soil moisture contained at the surface of the soil. I take all my now empty jars that I had the seeds in and I put them in a box and I put them aside because they're already all labeled. I don't want to be relabeling them every single week. So this box of jars will get pulled out every single week and started the same way, but I saved myself the step of labeling each jar if I just set them aside. Now, one thing that's really interesting is, is this is a photo from last year and it shows three different successions in that are still in my uh, seed room. Clearly some of uh, the, the third ones, uh, the second and the third one have been hardening off already. And the reason the third one probably hasn't been planted would be weather. And that's why I like to do them in large pots. But you can see the first pot is just starting to sprout out. The second pot has grown up some height and is starting to put on its second set of leaves. The third pot is, of course, taller. It's starting to put out its third set of leaves and the roots are coming out the bottom already. And that's why it's important to have pots that are big enough to support your seedlings if the weather is not conducive to planting out yet. Such as my sunflowers. I haven't planted them out yet. They're still sitting in the, uh, in the um, greenhouse front of the garage waiting for me to have time to plant them out, which I think I, I will probably be doing tomorrow. I did get my second succession of ranunculus planted out. The uh, leaf lettuce that had uh, self-seeded in one of my dahlia pots is now planted out. And the two nigellas that I missed are also now planted out. So all that's left for me to go to, to get out into the garden of my first successions of plantings of the cool weather crops are the snapdragons. And hopefully that will be done before the weekend is over. Now, the sunflowers that I'm growing, um, as I've mentioned before, are butter chiffon. I just love that, that, that lemony yellow color of it. The gold light which is the um, like this like the orange sunflower except it's got that light center uh, with a slight green tinge to it so I think that's going to be really pretty in bouquets I haven't grown that one before orange which is the grow light with the dark center and is pretty much your standard sunflower plum which has a really cool sort of purpley browny amberish leaf pattern it's, it's very earthy in color so it, it pretty much goes with everything then we have red, which is a really, really deep red and is uh, just stunning paired with all sorts of different colors like orange and pink and um, lavender. It's just that, that deep red really, really just is such a complementary color to so many different others without having that earthy feeling that the plum has. Then I have red lemon, which is a combination of what I would call almost like a plum feel in the center and that butter chiffon around the outside. Haven't grown that one before, so it'll be fun to see how that works with other, uh, with other um, flowers in a bouquet. I have white light, which is a white sunflower, just slightly tan, tannish color to the leaves. It's not like a pure white. And then it's got that light center. And then there's white night, which is exactly the same, but with the dark center. 
Now the one that I mentioned that was a full headed sunflower is double quick. I haven't grown that one before either. No, that's not true. I did grow it last year and I just grew some small ones uh, mainly because I planted, I got my seeds uh, shipped to me right to, right late in the season and I planted some. And um, by the time they were only about two feet tall was when we were getting into the late fall not enough light in uh, our neck of the woods and um, the flowers bloomed very very small probably only two inches big but they dried beautifully so I did use them in dried bouquets so that they weren't a loss and um, yeah I really liked them dried so I'll, I'll clearly I'll grow them bigger this year and, and uh, see, see how they work bigger in bouquets. Now that's how I got my sunflowers going. Now what I'm going to do is take you around and show you the what the seed room looks like with the and of course the sunflowers on the shelves and how they look. So as per usual I'm going to take you off a of selfie mode and get you into the other mode. And this time I did it without turning you off. Now you can see my dahlias are definitely growing quite nicely. I've got lots of them where I pinch them now for um, turning into bushier plants because wherever they're pinched they'll, they'll put out two sprouts. So this side is still all dahlias on the three different shelves there. When we swing around to this side I have more dahlias on this top shelf, more dahlias on this bottom shelf but I also have my tomatoes and as you can see, I'll take this and lean it on the floor. There's quite a bit more soil in it than there was last week. So they've been growing quite nicely and I've been topping them up with soil as they grow. And the reason for that is, is that tomatoes will put out roots along their stem if the stem is below the soil surface. And by getting a good strong rootstock, you'll get much hardier um, tomatoes out in the garden. So I know they always say, lots of people say start them in a pot and then plant, uh, bury them deep in the soil when you plant them. But then you have to get the seeds going. Whereas in this, or the seeds going, then you got to get the roots going. Whereas in this case, the roots are already well established by the time you get them into the garden. This lower shelf here, three more dahlias over here, and here are my sunflowers. Nothing to see because they were just done. You can see in this one here, I've got uh, wait, oh, I've got the lid off. You can see I've got the white tag here to say that's the first the first one. And you can see I've got the foil behind them to reflect light back into the trays, which is one of the reasons I only need to put one tray on each shelf is because by putting foil on the walls, I have a lot of re light reflection. Over here we've got more dahlias up here, more dahlias on this shelf. Down here my cosmos are really take, starting to take off and stiffen up, as are my African marigolds. Fun fact about the cosmos, I did decide to go to our local Campbell River Garden Centre and buy a couple of more packages of the ones that were really low in seed count. So. 11 out of the one package and 16 out of the other instead of the approximate 25 of each. And while I was paying for them at the till, I mentioned why I was buying one more of each was because of the low seed count. And um, now I'm getting shipped free ones for that low count. So that's good. That'll, uh, that makes me much happier. I didn't complain. I just mentioned it and I was buying others. But as a result of mentioning it, um, I am getting from the company that supplies the seeds a new package of each one of the seeds. I supplied them with a lot number so that they would know which ones we're not doing as well. Down here is some more dahlias. And that's it for my grow space. You can see it's pretty full. So next week, when I get the next two uh, trays of sunflowers going, I will probably be starting to harden off my, uh, um, oh, I will have hardened off to go into the greenhouse front of the garage, my marigolds and my cosmos to give me some space there. I'm also going to be getting more cosmos probably started, which means that some of these dailies that are over here will get squished onto these shelves because I can 
push some of these back, which can give me a little bit of space in the front of those. But that's the progression of my seed room. Let me take you off of this mode and back to me. And this week I managed to do both without actually turning my phone off. Open up my stand that my phone is on. And, uh, whoops, a little crooked there. Now I can show you some of the sunflower photos that I took last year. So this first one is called Birth of a Red Sun. The name tells you it's a red, red sunflower, but I just love how black and stunning the, the center of that uh, sunflower bud is. So that's my Birth of a Red Sun. The next one is Eye of the Sun, and this one is actually a plum. Then we have, this is actually a giant sunflower that had self-seeded itself into my garden that I let, that I let grow. You know, they grow like seven, eight feet tall. And I looked at it every day um, while I was out in, the gar out in the garden looking at my dahlias. And all of a sudden, this one day, I looked at it and I went, oh my goodness, there is a heart shape in it. So I started taking some photographs. It wasn't there the next day, and it wasn't there the day before, but for that one day, it had that little beautiful heart shaped in the center of the sunflower. So, good thing I looked at it that day, and I call that one Love in the Sun. This sunflower is called... Well, i got to lean a little closer into my computer to see what it's called. Red Cut Sun Rays. So, that would mean, again, that this is a red sunflower opening up a little bit more than that black bud. Then we have Sunburst, which again is a plum sunflower. There's a pattern here <laughs> of the uh, sunflowers that I was taking pictures of. <laughs> and this one is called Sunrise, and again, it's a red sunflower. So those are the photos of the sunflowers that I took. Um, I hope to take some more really interesting ones of the other colors because I didn't really realize until the end of the season that I had only focused on the plum and the reds because I guess those are the ones that I was just so fascinated with last year. To uh, finish off this video, I'm going to give you a photo of that beautiful crocus that I said was not blooming last week. But first, I want to ask you to please remember to like this video if you do. Definitely leave comments. I love reading them and answering them. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Next week, uh, this video is probably going to be my April seed starting. You know I'm going to be doing some more sunflowers and you know I'm going to be doing some more cosmos. But there might be a few other things that I'm starting as well and panicking about where I'm going to find space to put them. But anyway, um, I will leave you off with a final view of this stunning photograph of my lavender and white crocuses in the garden. Isn't that just beautiful? Bye.